Hello, everyone, and I want to welcome you to our Navigating the Grocery Store in Gluten-Free Style webcast. I'm Vanessa Weisberg, coming to you from the Celiac Disease Program at Children's National Health System, and I hope that everyone will learn a lot today about how to approach the grocery store while managing a gluten-free diet. Um, we're going to go through lots of things today. We're going to talk about the different aisles of the grocery store, what's different when you're shopping on a gluten-free diet, and then go aisle by aisle and look at some of the most popular brands of products that are on the market that are safe for a gluten-free diet. And I'll also talk about things to watch out for in each aisle. Um, before I get started, I just want to point out that there are a lot of products that are named throughout this presentation, and our program at Children's and Children's Hospital in general does not endorse any of these products. Uh, we're simply pointing out companies and products that have gone through a gluten-free testing procedure or have in some way um, determine that their products meet the FDA standard of 20 parts per million. Um, so just to be clear, there's no endorsement of any of the products um, in this presentation today. So why do we go to a grocery store? Um, we go to buy food for ourselves and our family members. Um, sometimes I go to the grocery store just to look for new products. Um, I have a four-year-old with celiac, and so I'm always on the lookout for new things that he might like. Um, I love just being able to browse new products, see new types of fruits and vegetables that are in season. And sometimes I like to be able to talk to the store staff where they can help answer questions about certain types of products. Um, I also love just looking at the variety of items and being able to have a choice. And I also at times like running into my friends at the grocery store, um, especially See, since I've become a mom, um, I'll often be at the store in the middle of the day and see other moms with their kids. And, you know, it's, it's nice to run into friendly faces while you're grocery shopping. So when you're diagnosed with celiac disease, um, you, you start out by going to the grocery store and feeling a little bit lost. I know when I was first diagnosed 14 years ago, that the first time I went to the grocery store, I felt completely out of my element. I used to know exactly where to go to pick up my favorite box of cereal or my favorite ice cream. And then all of a sudden, the gluten-free items were not in the same place that I used to go. Uh, my particular store when I was diagnosed had moved gluten-free products to a certain section. And so I all of a sudden had to go to that section to find things. So the way in which I approached a grocery store had to change. And it took a little while to learn how to navigate my store and, and the stores where I live now as well. But over time, I, I learned where the gluten-free products were kept. And instead of being frustrated when I went to the grocery store, I, I now look at going grocery shopping more as a portal to health and wellness, that the food I'm buying is keeping me and my son healthy. So the really big changes when you go to the grocery store is that when you have celiac disease, food labels really matter. You have to check the label of every single product that you buy. So as a reminder, the things that we're looking for are wheat, rye, and barley, plus any derivatives of those ingredients. Um, the way in which those foods are prepared really matter, and bulk items are um, really important to look at for safety. A lot of grocery stores have prepared foods, um, like salad bars or hot, hot, hot bars, where you can put together lunches to take with you. Um, it's really crucial that if you have celiac disease that you speak to the store about how those foods are prepared because they could be uh, created in a shared kitchen where there is no methods for pre preventing cross-contamination. Bulk items can become a problem because they are all stored in a gigantic bin. And if items are not always kept in the same bin, there could be cross-contamination if they're switching different grains around and you know if they're not cleaning them thoroughly in between um, different items being in them. But the good news is that there are so many companies that are labeling their products as gluten-free or including potential allergens in an allergen statement. So companies that test their products to less than 20 parts per million are able to put a gluten-free stamp on them if they choose to. And this makes it really easy to identify uh, safe gluten-free products. Um, and grocery stores are also taking big steps to help customers identify products by using things like shelf tags or end caps and special labels in their shopping guides. Um, so I see some questions coming in. How do we learn all the derivatives for wheat, rye, and barley? That's a really, really good question. So 
The best and easiest way is to download our Celiac Disease and Gluten-Free Diet Digital Resource Center from the App Store on your iPhone or Android devices. And from there, there is a list of safe and unsafe ingredients as well as questionable ingredients. I keep it in my phone um, so that if there's ever a question, I can quickly open it and find all the different derivatives for wheat, rye, and barley. Okay, see so one more question. How do you know who to ask in the grocery store about preparation methods? That's another excellent question. So when you're in the prepared foods section, uh, there's typically staff members who are restocking the foods and who are cleaning the areas. Uh, they also typically fall near the deli counter. So if there's nobody on the floor around the area where the prepared foods are, I usually start at the deli counter and ask them if they can um, call someone or page somebody who would be able to answer my questions. If they don't know the answer, then I would go to customer service and ask for the store manager because they'll be able to identify the right person for you to talk to. So we're gonna talk quickly about food labeling terms. Um, on a lot of products, you're gonna see these statements. This product was made on equipment shared with wheat um, or other allergens like eggs, dairy, nuts, soy, those types of things, or this product may contain wheat. So what do we do with those types of statements? Because it doesn't actually say that there is gluten in the food. However, there could be, or it, it may have these things in it. And the answer is that you have to ask more questions from the product manufacturer. Uh, I would recommend to be safe, steering clear of these items until you're able to talk to the, to the manufacturers and make an educated decision. So you'll find items, and my favorite example is of a company that makes black beans. I used to buy these beans all the time. And then one day I bought them and I saw on the label that it said, this product may contain wheat, eggs, nuts, fish, shellfish, dairy. And I said, why on earth would black beans have any of those things in them? All that's in the ingredients is water and beans and salt. So I called them and they said that they're, they, the company itself does not own the factory. So they're unsure of what other companies may do in that manufacturing facility when they're not using it. So I said, well, does your company have guidelines on properly cleaning the equipment before using it? And they said, absolutely, and they explained it. So after hearing how they clean the equipment before using it, I felt more comfortable that the black beans were in fact safe. Um, so you know, it, it always means asking more questions and, um, you know, just making sure that you feel comfortable eating the foods. Okay, so here is another question. When a company labels that something might be processed in a plant with other allergens, does that mean you should steer clear of it? So um, like I was just saying, um, sometimes yes and sometimes no. Um, you should always reach out to the manufacturer just to make sure. And one more question here, how do we find information to contact a manufacturer and what questions should we ask in those instances? So most products will have a contact information on it somewhere, whether it's a phone number or a website. And if you can't easily find it, then you can always just go to the company's website and or Google the product and look it up. Um, every company has a method to get in contact with them. And you know the questions that you wanna ask are, are sort of what I was just talking about. Um, can you tell us about how what your manufacturing practices are? What other products do you know of that are made in the facility? How do you clean the lines in between manufacturing different products? Just to make sure that you feel comfortable that when that product that you're eating is, is produced, that there were processes in place to make sure it it's gluten-free. So I'm just gonna to touch quickly on the nutrition of gluten-free products. So many gluten-free specialty foods are actually filled with extra fat and calories. Some of this is due to just the raw ingredients that are used in gluten-free goods. Um, when you replace wheat flour, you're using combinations of other ingredients like almond flour and coconut flour, which naturally have more fat in them than wheat flour does. So I would just always encourage you to check the nutritional values of particular brands before you buy it, just to, to think through and know what's in the food you're eating. So we're gonna now head into the grocery store and talk through the different aisles. We're gonna start with the perimeter of the grocery store. And this is where you typically enter most grocery stores and you're greeted by fresh fruits and vegetables. The really good news is that all of these things are naturally gluten-free. 
They're naturally good for you and give you lots of nutrition, but you can create endless numbers of meals from these foods. So it's a really safe gluten-free place to be. Um, so after you get through fruits and vegetables and you're going around the perimeter of the store, most stores typically have the meat, poultry, and seafood sections. In their natural form, all of these items are gluten-free, except when they have added marinades or seasonings to them. Uh, some of the marinades and seasonings are gluten-free, but seeing a product in this area that has a marinade definitely raises a red flag and you'll want to check on it. Um, things like chicken, baby back ribs, salmon, steaks, pork chops, shrimp, and scallops are just a few of the items that you'll find in these sections that, that are safe. Um, you'll also find the deli counter, and there's a few things to look out for here, as gluten is a very common filler in meats. Um, the first thing is that I would always recommend getting meats that are pre-packaged so that you're not relying on them slicing them at the deli counter where there can be cross-contamination. Um, I've listed four brands here, Boar's Head, Dietz & Watson, Applegate, and Oscar Myers Naturals. These are all brands that uh, test their products and have safe gluten-free options. So all of these you can also find pre-packaged. So I would definitely recommend um, picking up those instead of the ones that are sliced. So next in the perimeter of the store, you'll usually come upon the dairy aisle. Dairy is naturally gluten-free, uh, meaning things like milk, yogurt, cheese, sour cream, and butter are all good options. Uh, the one thing to watch out for here is with yogurt, there are several brands um, that use crunchy toppings on them, and you Many of those items, like cookies, for example, would not be safe for a gluten-free diet. Um, but the good news is that there are lots of brands labeling gluten-free. Um, Yoplait, Chobani, Dannon, Cabot, Stonyfield Farms, Fudge, and Alpina and Vosco's are just examples of a few companies that are doing a great job with labeling. So just a few reminders on things to watch out for in the perimeter of the grocery store. Uh, with meat and seafoods, any marinated or flavored items you'll need to double check on. Um, Pre-packaged items that could be soaking in something. Uh, things like bacon, sausage, and hot dogs that have fillers, you're always gonna wanna double check that those are gluten-free. Uh, for the marinades, one of the most common ingredients is soy sauce, and that can often contain wheat starch. So you'll definitely wanna double check uh, that it's gluten-free. Uh, imitation meats, things like imitation crab, uh, can be made using wheat flour, so you'll definitely want to make sure that you pick a gluten-free version. Most varieties are, have now been made gluten-free, but there are still a handful that aren't. With deli meats, again, pick pre-sliced and packaged meats that are not cut on the, the in-store slicers. Just to be safe, making sure there's no seasonings that are on those slicers. Um, with dairy, just look out for things that are flavored or have a mix-in. And our bottom line here is there are lots and lots of gluten-free options, but they could be all mixed together on the shelves, so just always be sure to double-check the ingredients. All right, so now I'm just going to see if there's any other questions that have come in. All right, I think we're all caught up there. So we're gonna head on over to the baking aisle where we're gonna talk about baking mixes and all-purpose flours. So the, there are so many options here. I know it seems overwhelming that you can't have wheat flour, but the good news is that there are so many gluten-free options to choose from. Some of the more popular grain flours are brown and white rice flours, sorghum, corn, millet, and teff flour. Then you have your non-grain flours like buckwheat, quinoa, soybeans, chickpea, coconut, and almond flours. And then starches, corn starch, potato starch, and tapioca starch. We also have pantry items like sugar, baking powder, baking soda, vanilla extract, and yeast, and all of these things are naturally gluten-free. Um, there are lots of safe brands to buy these types of ingredients. Bob Red Mill is a huge manufacturer of them. They have all the different individual flours and starches. Um, and also other companies like King Arthur Flour, Namaste Foods, Arrowhead Mills, Pamela's Products, Betty Crocker, and Glutino. Those are just a few of the many, many, many companies that are offering gluten-free options. 
So all purpose flowers. So we already talked about that we can't buy wheat flour. So that, that's a one-to-one -one flour. Wheat flour, you just that's all you need is you know a cup of, of wheat flour and you're set. For gluten-free, we can't do that. We have to mix together the flours to get the same properties that are in wheat flour and since we're replacing the gluten. So there are tons of different companies that produce all-purpose gluten-free flours. This is just a handful of the ones available. Pamela's products, Enjoy Life Foods, 123 Gluten Free, Cup for Cup, Gluten Free Pantry, Better Batter, Mina's Gluten Free, uh, Mina's Purely Divine, Bob's Red Mill, Namaste, Arrowhead Mills, Demanda Living. Uh, there are there's so many options. I would recommend trying a few of them to see how you like them in your recipes before picking one to stick with. And then once you find a favorite, or try ordering it in bulk. I like to order at least a five pound bag so that I have it available whenever I might want to make a batch of chocolate chip cookies. It's um it's snowing here today, so I promised my son tonight that we would make cookies. And you know I don't want to get to an afternoon where I want to bake and not have it in, in on hand. So I do like to keep it in bulk. Okay, I, there's a question here. How do you know which of these flour blends are best for you? So that's a very personal question. Um, everyone's different. Everyone has different tastes and likes different textures. So the best advice is really just to try out a number of them and see which one you like better. They, if you put 10 people with celiac in a room and had them all make the same chocolate chip cookies using a different flour, they would all come out completely different, tasting different, different textures, different sizes, um, and everybody would have a different favorite. So I would just recommend trying out a few and seeing which one you personally like better. So we're also going to talk about some baking mixes. There are mixes available for almost any baked item you can imagine, cookies, cakes, pie crust, pancakes, breads, muffin, pizza dough. There's so much demand that even the largest manufacturers in the United States are making gluten-free mixes. Um, I'm talking about people like Betty Crocker, Bisquick, and King Arthur Flour. There's also the specialty gluten-free manufacturers, Enjoy Life Foods, 123 Gluten-Free, Christian's, Pamela's Products, Mina's Purely Divine, Namaste, Gluten-Free Pantry, and Wholesome Chow. And there's even companies now making slice and bake gluten-free cookies, and that's from Immaculate Gluten-Free. So there's just so many options today that um, grocery stores are actually a fun place to go to find gluten-free baking products. So a few things to watch out for in the baking aisle. Um, mixed in with all of these gluten-free items, there will be wheat and gluten-based products. So you should be Pay particularly careful attention to how your grocery store organizing the, organizes the baking products. Some stores put all of the gluten-free items in a dedicated section, and others have them all mixed together and side by side. And many of the bigger companies have both gluten-free and gluten-containing products. So King Arthur, for example, has a gluten-free mix and a regular mix for flowers. So you want to make sure that you're always picking up the, the gluten-free version. It's really easy to mix them up. So just always double check and make sure that you've picked up the, the gluten-free option. All right, I see a couple questions coming in here. Uh, what about the nutritional values of the blend? So like I was talking about in the beginning of the of the webcast, the nutrition varies greatly. So for flour blends or mixes that use things like almond flour and coconut flour, they might be higher in fat and sugar, but they might be lower on the glycemic index. Um, whereas things like that are high with rice flours um, may be higher on the glycemic index, but have um, more fiber in them. So it's really important to look at the nutritional properties of each product individually. There's not really a global statement you can make about any one category of products. So it's really about looking at each product that you pick up and evaluating what the nutritional labels um, say for that product. All right, I see one more question here. All these products are so expensive. Is there a way to try them first to see if I like them? That's a great question. So there are some grocery stores that do allow you to try products, and if you don't like them, return them. I would definitely recommend talking to the customer service um, department at your local store to see what the return policy is. The other thing is that there are gluten-free expos all over the country. We have ours here in Washington, D.C. in June. Um, every year, and it's a great time to come and taste products from different manufacturers, where you'll be able to taste things and you know just decide if you if you like them before you go out and buy them. All right, so we're going to head on over to the breakfast and snacks aisle. 
So here we're going to talk first about cereals. So many cereals uh, contain gluten, and oftentimes if it's not wheat or oats that's in them, they, they are sweetened with malted barley syrup. So uh, you want to make sure that you're picking brands that say gluten-free on them and that have all gluten-free ingredients. Uh, here's a number of items that are naturally gluten-free. Uh, Chex has an entire line of gluten-free cereals. Uh, they have corn Chex, rice Chex, honey nut Chex, chocolate Chex, cinnamon Chex, apple cinnamon Chex. I think there's now berry Chex. There's so many different choices. Um, I'm going to come back to Cheerios in just a second. Um, Bob's Red Mill has gluten-free oatmeal and muesli. Arrowhead Mills has breakfast cereals, Nature Path and Viro Kids. This is a really popular brand for kids, um, as is Glutinos. They have lots of kid-friendly cereals. So when it comes to Cheerios, we get lots of questions. Um, Cheerios makes their oat. Their oats are produced in traditional oat fields, and once they come into the that they are mechanically sorted to remove any contaminated grains. So the controversy with oats comes from the fact that their oat fields are typically grown adjacent to wheat fields. And when the wind blows, the grains can blow and cross contaminate one another. So when they're harvested, there is contamination from wheat and barley uh, grains in the oats. So Cheerios developed, or General Mills, who owns Cheerios, developed a way to mechanically sort the oats to remove those other grains. And then once they've done that, they manufacture the oats into Cheerios, and then they're testing the completed boxes to make sure that they fall below the 20 parts per million threshold. So when you're talking through the FDA's labeling standards, Cheerios does meet the threshold for a safe gluten-free product. Um, however, there are a handful of people who have had reactions to eating Cheerios. And in many cases, the reason for this is because the protein in oats is very similar to the protein in gluten. And it is an intolerance. So people can just are not able to tolerate the protein found in oats. So what we recommend here at Children's National is that when you're diagnosed with celiac disease, that you stay away from oats until you're stable on the gluten-free diet, you've seen your, your levels going down, and you're feeling good. And then once you're feeling healthy again, then slowly reintroduce oats into your diet so that there's a way for us to determine if you're reacting to the oats themselves or if you're reacting because you're still having uh, reactions to gluten. All right, so moving along to the granola aisle, there are lots of options here. Uh, Bakery in Maine and Gluten Frida and Kind are just uh, three examples of companies offering safe gluten-free oatmeals and granola options, granola bars, in tons of different delicious flavors. Um, my four-year-old loves all of these products. Um, there's just so many things to choose from and different types to, to indulge in. Um, so we already talked about oats, so I'm going to skip over this, but this, this actual statement is in the slides that you can download from the handout section. Okay, so keeping up with the snack aisles, we're going to talk about pretzels and crackers. So these are definitely a hot choice for everyone living a gluten-free lifestyle. They're great snack foods, and there's so many options. Um, Centers of Hanover, Utz, Snack Factory, and Glutino all have crackers and pretzels that are wonderful. Um, Mary's Gun Crackers has a line of pretzels that are very earthy, crunchy with seeds that are delicious. Uh, Glutino has lots of different crackers and cheddar, multigrain, and vegetable flavors. Uh, Char has breadsticks that are a big hit with Italian dinners. Um, Crunchmaster makes a line of crackers, and they also have cheesy bites that are amazing. And then there are several companies that also sell nut-based crackers like Blue Diamond. So I don't know any kid who has gone through childhood without having a fruit snack addiction. So for many kids, these are really a favorite snack time. So thankfully, there are lots and lots of options here. Um, Betty Crocker's Gushers are naturally gluten-free and safe in many different flavors. Fruit Roll-Ups are gluten-free, uh, Ocean Spray Fruit Gummies, and of course, Annie's offers a whole line of organic and gluten-free gummies. So there really are lots and lots of options here. Just again, you know, always double check the labels to make sure they, the items are gluten-free. And on to the chips section. So there are lots of mainstream brands and flavors of chips that are gluten-free. 
Uh, typically, corn chips are naturally gluten-free. They're just made from corn and oil and salt. Um, brands like Tostitos, Mission, Lay's, Terra, Kettle Brand are all naturally gluten-free. And also a lot of the Utz brand products are, are gluten-free. And one of my new loves are the Enjoy Life Foods Plentil Chips. Uh, they taste just like chips, but they're made using lentils. So they have a little bit more of a nutritional punch to them. And they come in lots of different flavors. Uh, so one thing I really want to point out is veggie chips. Uh, my kids love veggie chips, and unfortunately, many of them contain wheat flour, so you need to be very, very careful. Uh, there are two companies that are certifying their veggie chips as gluten-free. One is Sensible Portion Veggie Straws, and the others are Eat Smart Snacks Veggie Cr Crisps. So if you are buying the veggie chips, be sure to double-check and make sure that they are gluten-free variety. And then, of course, rice cakes. Um, you know, there's lots of jokes in the celiac community about only being able to eat rice cakes. Uh, there's lots more to eat than rice cakes, but rice cakes are still a standard of the gluten-free diet. Um, Lundberg has a very popular line. And then, of course, there are other puffed, crunchy products like Pirate's Booty and Popcorn that are naturally gluten-free and safe. So just a few things to watch out for that we've talked about. Um, cereals are often flavored with malted barley, which is not gluten-free. Um, even if you find a cereal that says its main ingredient is rice, always double check that it's just rice and that there is no wheat, rye, or barley in it. Um, always double check with chips and snacks. Uh, recipes change, companies make changes in the products that they're using, so just always double check the, uh, the food labels. All right, so now heading on over to the sweet treats, we're gonna talk about cookies, graham crackers, and some other products. So there are lots of companies now offering gluten-free cookies. Uh, companies like Glutino has tons of options, chocolate chip cookies, Oreo-style cookies, animal cracker crackers and wafers. Udi's has snickerdoodles, chocolate chip oatmeal raisin, peanut butter coconut, salsa caramel cashew, divine sounding flavors. Pamela's Products has cookies and shortbreads um, and peanut butter cookies and fig bars. Um, Tate's Bake Shop has chocolate chip ginger zingers and brownie cookies. Enjoy Life has totally allergen. They're free of all the eight common allergens, um, chocolate chip, double chocolate, snickerdoodles, and gingerbread spice. Glow has lots of different options as well. And then, of course, we mentioned Immaculate before, which is the company that has the slice and bake cookies, um, which are just such a treat to make, um, makes life really easy. Graham crackers. So there's nothing like sitting out by the fire and making s'mores. So thankfully there are now lots of gluten-free graham crackers on the market. So we can make s'mores out of them or we can make pie crusts or just eat them alone with a glass of milk. Um, Pamela's Products has um, three different types of graham crackers plus a bunch of bites. And Kinicky Nick Foods has a graham style cracker and Char has their honey graham crackers, so lots of great options there. All right, I see a question came in here. You mentioned air pop popcorn. Is microwave popcorn gluten-free as well? So the same rule applies. Um, you're going to want to double-check the label. Most microwave popcorn should be gluten-free, but again, just double-check the label that there's no um, flavorings added or any um, other ingredients that might be like an anti-caking agent. Um, but for the most part, popcorn should be safe. And just a few other sweet treats to, to talk about. Toaster pastries. Um, I remember being a kid and once a year my mom would buy a box of Pop-Tarts for us when we were on vacation. Uh, so it was something that I, I definitely thought about after being diagnosed. Um, thankfully, Glutino has uh, several different types of toaster pastries. And then Animal Crackers, a, a kid favorite. Um, there are three companies that make them. Knicky Nick Foods, Glutino, and Annie's Homegrown. So let's move on into um, meals, breads, and pizzas in the frozen section. So the frozen food aisle has lots and lots of gluten-free um, options. Um, many of those gluten-free products need to be frozen to pre preserve their shelf life. Um, so it's a great place to, to find items. Um, you'll also find things here that are naturally gluten-free, like fruits and vegetables, meats and fish. And, you know, in their natural unprocessed form, these items are all safe and gluten-free. 
But again, always double check that anything that's been packaged doesn't have seasonings or breadings or sauces on them that would not be unsafe. So again, just always checking. Um, so first I'm gonna talk about some gluten-free meal options. Amy's has dozens of gluten-free meal options in the freezer sections, things like stir fries and rice bowls, shepherd's pie, burritos, baked pastas, enchiladas, lasagnas, and tofu scramblers. Uh, gluten-free cafe has a variety of options. Evil has a whole line of gluten-free frozen burritos, um, enchilada bowls, steak bowls, and even chicken teriyaki that's made using gluten-free teriyaki sauce. Um, Udi's has a line of skillet meals, which are these um, big bags that come with everything in them, and all you have to do is dump them into a, a skillet and saute them for 10 minutes, and you have like a whole dinner. Uh, they have chicken parmesan, ziti, and meatballs, and chicken alfredo, and then they have uh, meals that you cook in the oven, like lasagna. Then there are lots and lots of gluten-free pizzas, um, Freshetta, California Pizza Kitchen, Smart Flower Foods, Amy's, Udi's, Glutino, Foods by George, and Against the Grain. Again, that's just a few of the options that are on the market. So definitely go to your freezer section and check it out. Um, chicken nuggets and fries. Um, there are lots of chicken nugget options. Um, Bell and Evans has great nuggets. Golden Platter has a variety of uh, very kid-friendly nuggets. They have um, some that are shaped like frozen characters, zoo animals, and space travelers. Uh, other companies with nuggets are Ian's, Applegate Naturals, Tyson, Saffron Road, and Purdue. And then Dr. Prager's makes a line of veggie burgers and fish sticks that are naturally gluten-free. And there are lots of French fries as well. Arida's and Alexia's are two of the popular brands for French fries and tater tots. So breads and breakfasts. Again, there are so many options for sandwich breads, bagels, muffins, baguettes, hamburger buns, English muffins, and wraps. Um, some of the more popular companies are Udi's, Rudy's, Foods for Life, Glutino, Char, and Foods by George's. Uh, there's also waffles, French toast sticks, and pancakes, which Vans makes a lot of different options that are sold in most mainstream grocery stores. Um, Glutino offers donuts and breakfast treats. Um, you know, there are just so many of these different breads and breakfasty type foods that I would really recommend just going to your grocery store and walking through the frozen aisle and just searching out all the gluten-free options and trying some of them till you find one that you really like. Um, and of course, sweet treats are always in the frozen section. Um, let's start with ice cream. So ice cream is generally gluten-free unless there's something mixed into it like cookies. Um, so you're always gonna wanna double check that. Um, Edie's, which is a, and Breyers, two of the biggest uh, manufacturers of ice creams, um, clearly label which of their ice creams are gluten free. So those are really great options. Um, there's also gluten and dairy free ice creams. Uh, I know a lot of people with celiac also have a dairy issue. Uh, the So Delicious line of products are, are made with coconut, cashew, almond, and soy milks. And they have so many options that are gluten-free. They even have a cookie dough ice cream that's gluten-free. And then they have a bunch of different fudge bars. Um, and then Julie's Organic offers gluten-free ice cream sandwiches, which are delicious. So I would highly recommend checking those out. Oops, we skipped a slide. Um, the one thing I really want to point out is just paying attention to how stores organize the frozen section. Uh, this has happened to me many times that there are products from the same company that look identical and the pictures on them are the same and there's just a tiny little notation that says gluten-free on the gluten-free version and they're right next to the not gluten-free version and they look the same so it's very easy to pick up the wrong package so please always double check the label and make sure that you have the gluten-free version of the product that you wanted to buy all right I see a couple questions here um, do the Breyers ice cream say gluten-free on their labels? Um, it depends. Um, I have gone to the Breyers website and they very easily identify the, the ice creams that are gluten-free. So if it's not on the package, I don't have one in front of me right now, um, but if you don't see it on the label, then from any smartphone, just pull up the Breyers website and there's a list on their site. All right, so canned goods. Um, we're gonna talk about soups, chilies, beans, fruits, and veggies. There's lots of options here. So soup is a really convenient thing just to keep in the cabinet. Um, it's 
it's easy on a cold day. You can just heat it up real fast and you have a nice hearty lunch. Um, but many canned soups do use pasta or flour um, as thickeners. So you're always gonna wanna make sure you're picking up a gluten-free brand. Uh, gluten-free Cafe has a whole line of gluten-free soups like chicken noodle, cream of mushroom, veggie noodle, and black bean. Amy has 15 different flavors of soups that are ranging from very basic to very exotic like Thai coconut. Um, Progresso is a very mainstream brand. They have lots of gluten-free options as well, like New England clam chowder, potato broccoli, um, and cheese and chicken corn chowders. And then Dinty Moore also has single-serving microwavable um, beef stews that are really convenient when you're traveling. And then chili is something that I remember my mom always having in the cabinet when we were kids to make her famous tamale pie or to make nachos. Um, Amy's has a lots of different chilies that are naturally gluten-free. So beans are a great thing to incorporate into any gluten-free diet. Um, there's lots of different types, black beans, cannellini beans, kidney beans, chickpeas. Um, there's some that have added salt, some that are low sodium. Uh, there are just so many different options here. Um, Eden Foods, Goya, Bushes, and Amy's all have uh, gluten-free bean options. Uh, I just want to remind everyone about what I said in the beginning of the, of the webcast about beans. Um, some of these companies are the ones that say, you know, may be produced in a facility that also produces other ingredients. So if there's any questions, call the company and just talk to them um, because beans should be naturally gluten-free. Vegetables and fruits. So I always like to advocate eating fresh fruits and vegetables um, because they, they do contain more nutrients. Um, however, in a pinch when it's cold outside, if things aren't in season, canned is a, is a great way to, um, to get fruit into your diet. So Del Monte and Dole um, offer many, many different options for gluten-free canned fruits and vegetables. Green Giant clearly labels all their products that are gluten-free. Um, and then most store brands that are the private labels are naturally gluten-free as well, but just always be sure to double check the labels. So seafood, there are lots of types of canned seafoods, things like tuna and clams and salmon. Um, there's lots of options here as well. Chicken of the sea, bumblebee and starkist, wild planet foods. Um, so lots of different options. You can make a tuna salad for, for lunch. Um, I like getting canned clams when I don't have time to do, um, to do full steamed clams to put in pasta. So it's a nice way of adding some protein into your dinner. So just a few things to watch out for here. Um, items that are heat and serve like uh, soups and chilies can contain wheat flour. One example that I found recently was chili with beans versus chili without beans. So the chili with beans was labeled as gluten-free, but the chili without beans had wheat starch in it. And the reason is that the beans absorb liquid and help to thicken the chili. So in the one with beans, they did not need to add in the the flour but in the one without beans they did so just be sure that um just because it's the same company doesn't mean that they're all gluten free all right i see a question here are not all cans of tuna gluten free what might be in them to make them not so it really depends there could be a stabilizer in them um, there could be an added flavoring added to to a can of tuna so again there's new products coming out every single day. And if you're picking up tuna, just double check the label. All right, so moving on to sauces and condiments. There's lots of great things here. Um, I always put this picture up of the uh, squeeze bottles because I like to remind people that we should always use squeeze bottles for gluten-free condiments because you can easily prevent cross-contamination. So this jar of mayonnaise on the far um, left here, that's a no-no because if we're dipping a knife into it and then we spread it on gluten containing bread, the crumbs would go back in and contaminate the whole jar. So much easier just to use all the gluten-free um, squeeze bottles. So thankfully, most condiments like ketchup, mayo, mustard, and relish are naturally gluten-free. It would be pretty hard to find one that wasn't. Um, all of Boar's Head condiments are naturally gluten-free, so they're always a safe bet. Um, Heinz has a wide variety of gluten-free ketchup and mustard and mayo and relish options, um, and they have an extensive list on their website. And French's mustards are all safe and gluten-free. 
So soy sauce and Asian style sauces. So here's where probably the biggest um, traps come in. Um, many of these Asian style sauces and soy sauce can contain wheat because it's in the soy sauce. Um, you'll typically find soy sauce in Asian cuisines from countries like Chinese or Chinese food, Jap Japanese food, Thai food, Cantonese, Vietnamese food, Filipino, and Burmese cooking. And in the United States, a lot of the soy sauces are made using a blend of soy and wheat. So they would be not safe for a gluten-free diet. However, there are lots and lots of safe gluten-free soy sauce brands today. Um, Kikomin and Sanjay are two of the most popular that have um, gluten-free soy sauces. Um, there's also lots of safe marinades and Asian style sauces from Thai Kitchen, Taste of Thai, and again, Sanjay and Kikomin. So whenever you're buying these types of sauces, always double check to make sure that they're made using gluten-free soy sauce. Um, all right, so let's talk about some sweet and spicy sauces, um, things like hot sauce, salsas, and barbecue sauces. Um, again, lots of gluten-free options. Chichis, Chocitos, and Pace, uh, Green Mountain Gringo have all uh, big lines of gluten-free salsas. Uh, when it comes to hot sauce, uh, companies like Frank's, Tabasco, and Chula. And then for um, barbecue sauces, Stubbs, Bone Second Sauce, Annie's, and some of the varieties of Heinz. Um, you're going to want to watch out because some of these companies, or maybe not these companies, but other brands could use um, malted barley as a flavor in them, or they could also use malt vinegar, which would not be safe for a gluten-free diet. So definitely want to watch out for those. Uh, so pasta sauces are very easy to find gluten-free. Um, most of your red sauces are naturally gluten-free. A handful of um, Alfredo sauces might have flour in them as a thickener, but this is a very easy aisle to shop in. Um, some of the bigger brands like Emeril's, Classico, and Prego uh, do all have naturally gluten-free options for sauce. So salad dressing is a great thing for people who are gluten-free because typically they're made using vinegar and oil and lots of spices and herbs. Um, so for the most part, these are safe. Uh, the only vinegar that you need to watch out for is malted vinegar. Um, so when you're looking at the labels here, you're typically going to find very few ingredients, but you're still always going to want to double check them. Um, again, some of the safe brands, Newman's Own, Hidden Valley, Annie's and Ken's, and then Kraft also has many, many gluten-free salad dressings. So just to dive a little bit more into oil and vinegar, almost all oil you're going to find is gluten-free. Um, things like olive oil, canola oil, coconut oil, and vegetable oil. Um, once in a while, there could be an oil that's flavored with something that would not be gluten-free, but again, most oils are safe. Um, and again, all vinegars like balsamic, apple cider, white and red wine vinegars, champagne vinegars are all naturally gluten-free. The only one that's a problem is malt vinegar. So if you see malt vinegar, it is not safe for a gluten-free diet. Okay, I see a question here. Do safe salad dressings label that they are gluten-free? Uh, perhaps yes and perhaps no. So again, the gluten-free food labeling law in the United States is voluntary. So that means that a company only has to label gluten-free if they want to, and they've gone through the appropriate testing to make sure their product contains 20 parts per million or less of gluten. So if you don't see the gluten-free label on it, uh, don't necessarily fret. Um, it could very well be completely safe. So what you should do is check the food label, and if there's no gluten-containing ingredients, it's probably safe to eat. Just to verify, you could also contact the manufacturer just to double check. So again, um, when you're looking at sauces and condiments, there's there can be items mixed together. Companies can make multiple of the same item, but one gluten-free and one not. So just always double check your label um, to make sure that you, you are picking up a safe product. So rice and noodles, this is a really fun um, section of the store. So let's talk about rice first. So white and brown rice are naturally gluten-free and they're two of the most common items in a grocery store. Both are naturally gluten-free and are used in lots and lots of different types of cooking. Um, there's also red or black forbidden rice, wild rice, just lots of great options. Um, again, in their natural form, they're gluten-free. You're just going to want to watch out if they're in a mix or like a meal kit to make sure that none of the seasonings or add additions to those meal kits um, contain gluten. 
Also, just one other thing to point out, rice pilaf can often contain a mixture of rice and orzo. So make sure that what you're, what you're picking up is just rice. So pasta. I remember 14 years ago when I was first diagnosed, there was only one brand of gluten-free pasta. And since then, there are now dozens of brands of gluten-free pasta. They're made using any grain that you can grind down. Um, Ancient Harvest makes pasta from quinoa. Varilla uses corn and rice. Bio Nature uses um, a blend of corn, rice, and soy. Garofalo uses quinoa, corn, and rice. Uh, pasta Rustica imports from Italy from corn and rice. Char uses corn, millet, uh, flour, and rice flour. Tinkiata uses brown rice. And um, True Roots uses brown rice, quinoa, amaranth, and corn. So, so many different options for different types of grains to make gluten-free pastas from. Um, one thing I like to point out is that if you want to make pasta to use in a cold preparation, so like a pasta salad, I would definitely recommend using a pasta that has quinoa in it. It will keep it nice and soft and not crumbly. So then after we've talked about all those other types of noodles, now let's talk about Asian noodles. So these are types of um, rice noodles that are used in things like pad thai or pho um, and are typically made using buckwheat, mung bean, and kelp. There are several different manufacturers here. Some of the bigger ones that make gluten-free options are Annie Chun's, Thai Kitchens, Eden, and Kame, and then Miracle Noodle and Si Tang Wool. Um, so lots of options here as well. So just a few things to watch out for. Again, there could be gluten-free and gluten-containing on the shame shelf. This uh, happens with a lots of the bigger brands like um, Ronzoni or Barilla, where there's both gluten-free and gluten-containing right next to each other. So always make sure you're picking up the gluten-free version. And then when you get home, just a reminder, if you're cooking both gluten-free and gluten-containing at the same time, use separate pots of water and separate colanders or do all of the gluten-free first so that there is no contamination. All right, we're almost to the end here. Let's talk about spreadable flavors. So peanut butter is a staple in most households, um, but and thankfully is mostly naturally gluten-free. If peanut butter is not your thing, there's also other nut butters like almond butter, cashew butter, and pistachio butter. Um, nuts are naturally gluten-free, so it's typically very easy to find gluten-free versions of these butters. Um, some of the popular brands, peanut, Peter Pan, Skippy, and Smuckers, Earth Balance, Arrowhead Mills, Justin Smart Balance, once again, nut butter and marinatha. Um, and then, of course, there's things like coconut spreads that are naturally gluten-free from Melt Organic, Now Foods, and Calapo. So lots and lots of options. Um, there's also seed butters if nut butters aren't your thing or if you have an allergy to nuts. Uh, tahini is made from ground sesame seeds and is naturally gluten-free. There are also things like sunflower seed butter and soy nut butter. And again, sun butter and I am healthy have um, naturally gluten-free options. Uh, jellies and jams are for the most part naturally gluten-free. Um, these are great to put on toast or uh, mixing in with yogurt, um, make glazes for meats. And there's just so many different options here. Um, Welch's, BioNature, and Bomamon are three popular jelly brands that are naturally gluten-free and come in all of the flavors that you would want. Um, so desserts and sweets, things like Nutella is naturally gluten-free and can be used for lots of different desserts or breakfasts. And marshmallow fluff. Um, if you like a fluff or nutter sandwich, um, fluff can be added to um, a peanut butter sandwich. It can be used to make s'mores on ice cream. Um, it's naturally gluten-free and safe. So just a few things um, to watch out for. Um, there, It is possible that some of these items would have mix-ins in them. If they do, double check to make sure they're gluten-free. And you know, on the nutrition side, always watch out for the saturated fat content um, just to make sure you're picking something that you're happy with nutritionally. So I'm gonna just pause for a second, oops, and see if there are any more questions. And I'll give you all just a second to, to type in questions.
All right, well, I don't see anyone typing, so I want to just thank everybody for joining in for today's webcast. And if you have any questions, you can write to me at vweisbro at childrensnational.org. And I hope you enjoyed today's presentation.